thanks for coming, Dr. Nunez. Well, thank you for, yeah, thank you for the invitation. It's always nice to come and share some information um, with, a, with a, you know, practicing dentist uh, from all over the world that are watching you because you are well known all over the world, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> Here's the good uh, information for you. Lava technicians, uh, we do have a sometimes problem about the uh, discolorations. After they cement, especially slim, dislocate, and um, they do have, after bonding, whatever they cemented, they have a discoloration problem. So, my question to Dr. Nunez, and then what's the difference compared to um, IvoClean and compared to ZClean? Well, we, you know, um, well, first of all, I want to ask Shin a question. Okay, yes. You know, yes, sir. when, um, we were talking before we started doing this that um, I was asking him about if you know clinicians will call and ask you questions about bonding. So you get this, right? I do. Yeah, well, a lot of time actually. Uh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here is a a a totally different interaction between uh, current lab technicians and what was before, because yes. there are a lot of you know. Um, issues with bonding and they want to know from you what the best protocol is, right? Yes, that's what they're asking for, yes. So of all the surfaces that you get questions about, what is the most, you, I want to say the most um, sensitive one? The sensitive one? Well, they, uh, like, you know, let's talk about zirconia then. Uh, first, like zirconia, everybody's uh, always thinking about uh, bonding strength. I mean, the strength of the you know, bonding because uh, a lot of doctors, there's a lot of veneers and stuff going out, and uh, people are looking for something that more uh, you know, stable. And like veneer, uh, zirconia veneers, at the first time when it came out to the market, everywhere was like, uh, you know, we can't bond zirconia, so it's going to debond, and there's no way we can bond it. But now everybody's talking about bonding because we have a uh, you know, Z prime that will give us stronger uh, bonding. So right, yeah, that's most of the sensitive things that I always hear from my doctors. Now, what, uh, what back to my question. Right, I'm, I'm going to go back to this. No, because this clings on to your question. Okay. One of the beautiful things about bonding is that you can um, achieve two things. You must achieve two things. You must achieve, first of all, mechanical retention by any means. And you need to have something that I like to call chemical interaction. You need those two elements in order to achieve proper bonding to any surface. If you're looking for bonding, true bonding. All right. So. Um, with zirconia, zirconia is unique. Um, it's a very strong material. Um, at the beginning, it wasn't very aesthetic, but nowadays it is. But one of the biggest issue with bonding to zirconia is that the surface will become contaminated after trying it. So even I'm assuming that you guys. So what they're going to do after trying? Well, this is the problem. Okay. First of all, I want to ask you guys: Do you guys sandblast all the zirconia restorations before it's being sent? Yes, we do. Okay, so you take care of that step for the clinician, mm -hmm. which yes. is a good thing. Mm -hmm. So you sandblast, all right? Um, when the, the doctor receives the restoration, okay, he's going to try it in. Yes. He's going to try it in. Immediately, that restoration is going to become contaminated by either saliva or blood. blood. Unlike other surfaces, saliva will chemically interact with zirconia, all right? There is something called phosphate lipids in saliva, which will chemically deplete bonding sites on the zirconia surface. Do I sound smart? I know I'm smart. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm pretty smart. No, so, no yeah. back to my question. No, no, this no, guy did not give me my no, answer. Okay, okay so, so okay, wait, wait, question. wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna answer your question. Okay. <laughs> Once I have a contaminated zirconia surface. No, 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 back to my question. This is a lithium dislocate, just like the lithium press, just like Emacs Yes. Tires. My question to you, um, the color change? Right, this color change mm -hmm. after they cement. Okay, but well, let so me. So our clients sometimes had a problem mm -hmm. after they follow the, the pore core, which is from IvoClean, and then they bond it, either bond it and cement. Mm -hmm. and after one week, two weeks later, they got discolorations. Mm -hmm. That's I need answer from you. That has to do with this. Procedural. Oh, okay, from a procedural point of view, and then we'll get back to the zirconia thing. but. From the procedural point of view, it has to do with the stability of the cement. Okay. You know, if you're going to bond the crown, you're going to need a dual cure cement. Okay. Some dual cure cements are more stable than others. 
And stability is related to proper working time, setting time, and also shade shifting. This can happen, okay? Also, one thing is how the cement looks immediately, and the other thing is how the cement looks after it's been fully polymerized, right. all right? And you can see in some cements a shade shift because of this phenomenon. So it is not really- It's not shade shift, it's black. It's completely bizarre. Well, you know? that's, that's a tough question because- There's a good uh, problem out there. I would say probably 2%. Okay. So here's the things I know. So not only talking about the physical product, so probably they do have a 3M, mm -hmm. or they do have another GC, GSM, mm -hmm. right? So after or before they using their cement, mm -hmm. they used to they use an Ivo Claim, mm -hmm. which is the we clean about this silicate, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So even though they did it, has the black dark well, margin, especially margin. To me, it's contaminated. Absolutely. Uh, Ivoclean or Zerclean will not have an effect on lithium disilicate. Okay. It will not cause any problems. It will clean the surface. Okay. okay. What is the procedure then? Well, the procedure. So I give them, I, okay, I sandblast it. Yes. Okay. Sometimes I do etch it. Okay. Sometimes I would just send it out to after sandblast and the doctor can do we'll etch it. Either sandblast it, they etch it. Okay. If whatever they have a cementation. Okay. So, what is the process okay. if they have ivoclean well you see they're going to they're going to receive the restoration from me from you yes they're going to try it in yes it's going to get contaminated by Correct. saliva on zirconia it will react on lithium disilicate it will not okay it will not react so ivoclean or okay. zirconia on zirconia it will remove that reacted surface it will just remove it chemically because of the ph okay this is very alkaline this one and Zirconia, they're very similar. It will remove the contaminated surface of Zirconia and then you can bond to it. On lithium disilicate, it will act more as a detergent. It will just clean the surface, okay? Yeah. But it will not react chemically, mm -hmm. okay? It's not designed to react chemically with Zirconia, but it can clean it. Now, if you see a black staining. So what is the procedure I keep asking? <laughs> Apply so they try in the mouth? No, no, no. You no, no, I send, send the crown. Send the crown, try it in the, the mouth. Video, try in the mouth. They, they bring it out. It, bring it out. Okay. Wash clean. R uh, yeah. With dry surface. Well, no, you can just rinse it with water rinse and then apply this. Leave it there for 20, 30 seconds. Rinse it and now you bond. Okay. And now you bond. Okay. Now you bond. On lithium disilicate, you have to apply your, your, um, your silane. Right. Okay. And the silane can be uh, from any company, okay. but it has to be pure silane. Pure silane. Pure silane. Some adhesives have silane incorporated in them. That's not recommended. Why? You, Why? Because Why silane that? will be deactivated in low pH. Okay. So most adhesives will be low pH. Okay. So the silane incorporated in them will not react with the surface. What will react with the surface? Lithium disilicate surface will be pure silane. Okay, so, that's another key. So if you have silane from Ultradent, from 3M, from Kerr, from GC, from Bisco, from Curare, it doesn't matter. What matters is that the product is pure silane. You apply it on the surface. Do they have a product? Who? I mean other company. Has Absolutely. Pure, okay. Absolutely. There is, you know, we're not talking about trying to use a specific product from a company. We're trying to talk about what the most optimized procedure is, regardless of the product. You know, whether you decide to use a Bisco product or a 3M product, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. You're what? from 3M, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Hello, 3M people. My name is Dr. Rolando Nunez, and I am here promoting the use of silane on lithium disilicate. I am the manager for clinical research at Bisco Incorporated. So no, Luke, to answer your question, I do not work for 3M. But that's all right, Shane, right? Yeah, right? I mean, these guys like me anyway. <laughs> okay. Actually, I'm from GC America, too. Oh, are you? Just kidding. Okay. So, um, the use of pure silane is important. Why will it turn black? There's got to be contamination with blood. There has to be some kind of leakage or seepage of blood into that margin. So how can they eliminate it? 
that's from, that's that's from a visually or with a microscope well how he, can you tell well here's the thing this is more of a clinical procedure than a product okay so what i did when i practiced dentistry and i did practice dentistry for 18 years mm -hmm. so you know i i had some experience so you have a good background a little bit Just kidding. a little bit a little i've been a dentist for 25 and i practiced for 18 mm -hmm. Um, and I've been involved in research for 16 years, a bonding research, that's all I do. Um, I used to use a product from Ultradent called Astringident um, or uh, Viscostat. Mm -hmm. These products will definitely stop bleeding at the marginal sulcus. It will stop the bleeding, it will be almost immediate. Good. And every single time I cemented a crown or a veneer, I will, I will use these products in order to avoid any sort of that little bit of blood that gets right there in that finish line, in the termination line, it will just not be there. Okay. And I used a microscope, yes, and I understand that not everybody has a microscope to work restorative dentistry, but definitely loops. You have to use loops, okay? So I used 3.5 loops and I used a microscope. Every single time I was going to cement, I used this product from Ultradent. It was just fantastic. Ultradent doesn't pay me one dime for saying this, which is fine because it doesn't matter. What matter is that the procedure... We give them free sample. Yes. Uh, call Ultradent on my behalf. They'll get you a free sample of a strange death. Are we getting any questions, man? No questions? Well, there was one question. What was the question? The question was, what percentage of procedures are being used with Fujisem or something similar That's good versus bonding? So cementation versus bonding. So glass enamel, obviously with Fuji's. I think that right now it's it's a split. Okay. Uh, it's an even split. Uh, the people that use a lot of people that use glass enamel shifted towards the bonding, but some people are uh, you know die-hard glass enamel users. Whether it's Fuji Sam or any other product, Shore Fuji is uh, probably the most uh, popular ones. Um, the, the Fuji line from and. Uh, and that's okay. It works. Um, I particularly, due to the nature of my job, um, I'm an advocate for bonding. Okay, but glass because the the strength. So we're talking about strength. Yes. About the material. Yes. Because itself, lithium silicate has a little bit weak, probably 400 to 500 megapascal. Mm -hmm. But after they bond it, it goes up. The up was almost thousand. Yeah. So, from my standpoint, I hate cracked porcelain. I hate, the, you know, cracking. Sure. I can give you free, but <laughs> I prefer bonding. Yeah, bonding. Yeah. For lithium disilicate, I believe, and, and uh, it is bonding. Especially is, veneers. Yeah. You cannot do a veneer without knowing how to bond. You know, you can know how to take a good... Uh, it takes a little bit more time. It, it, you can learn how to take good photography. You can learn how to do smile design, mm -hmm. you know, if that is the thing that you want to do. And that's great. Um, and you can know how to prep well. If you don't know how to bond it, you're going to fail because a veneer relies on bonding. A veneer has no mechanical retention whatsoever. Right. And nowadays, with these, you know, the whole mock-up system that you do the wax up and then the mock-up, your, um, your preparations are so conservative. Barely touch the enamel, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's what they like to call minimally invasive dentistry. Yeah. So you don't have that mechanical retention that you do when you prep, so now you rely on bonding. And if you don't know how to bond lithium disilicate, you shouldn't get into veneers. Mm -hmm. You should learn how to bond first, and then do the veneers, and then you will succeed. Your chances for success improve tremendously. Is there any option for those people, which is, I, and I, um, I assume a lot of people like the cement, because due to um, time consuming, mm -hmm. whatever, is there any good way so they can cement it? Oh sure. From especially your product. Well, you know, I, I'll give you I'll give you an option for yes. for zirconia, yes. for example. Now back to zirconia. Right? Okay, but, yeah, back to zirconia. For zirconia, zirconia requires um, not only to have a clean surface that also has mechanical retention, but it also requires a primer to have the chemical interaction. Uh, the, the most used primer is MDP. Okay, so you have products from Visco, from GC, 
from um, from Curare, um, from Ivoclar that have MDP. And you have to apply those products in the zirconia surface. However, there are other products that have that MDP monomer incorporated in the cement. And, and I'll give you an example. This one is called Ferrocem. Mm -hmm. This is a new product? This is a fairly new product. What is the you know, difference compared to BSEM and Okay, so BSEM is a self-adhesive cement. Okay. Your basic, um, uh, very standardized self-adhesive cement. Therosem has... Primes on it? Has the, the, the MDP okay. containing model. What does the MDP stand for? Uh, 10 meta di, I forget, <laughs> polypropyl, <laughs> flunky, I don't let me, let remember. Let me, I mean, let me Google it. Let me Google it. Then. I mean, I'll look it up. Oh, okay. you know, well, well, no, no, that's fine. Do you know this by heart? <laughs> 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 if anybody knows that what TEM NDP stands for, write it now and then I'll send them some free product. <laughs> I know what it stands for, I just can't remember. <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it's a tongue twister. Okay. So, it has the MDP in it. It's, it goes from acidic to alkaline during the polymerization process. No other cement does that, which we know that alkaline pH has an effect on um, bacterial growth. And the other thing is that um, Therosem is very easy to clean and it releases calcium. All right? It releases calcium. And that's also a good thing. So we have a product that is different from any other self-adhesive cement out there. Okay? So that's interesting. So this one can cement with um, zirconia. Yes, without the need of a primer. Wow. Without the need of a primer, and you would just sandblast it. Just sandblast it. Okay. What is the cost? The retail price? Three hundred million dollars. <laughs> it is about <laughs> know, like, like hundred and twenty yeah, right, dollars, right, something right. like that. And this it, range? Yeah, and and all way, you could do maybe anywhere between fifteen to seventeen restorations and. The cool thing about it... So we don't need to prime that. They don't need it actually. They don't need any primer. Okay, so then we don't have to get the G prime inside laboratory. If you... If, if they buy yeah, it. If, if every single user in your lab is, has this for zirconia... So this one can cement to the zirconia, PFM, lithium silicate... Not, lithium disilicate, Not, you can, but this cement, and I'm going to show you, and I don't know if, you know, this cement, and I'm going to put up a tip here. Okay. I'm just going to show you, and this is not either a good thing or a bad thing, it is just the nature of the product, because it has calcium in it. I'm what going, about cleaning time? Oh, it's very easy to clean. Easy you, to you, clean. you flash cure it, okay. and then it, 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 comes, it comes out as like, like rubber. What about taste? It tastes like mint. Mint? Yes. <laughs> as you can see here, and I don't know if you can see this, it doesn't taste like mint. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> this is very opaque. So with your lithium disilicate, if you are in the static zone... So you have only one color? It's only one shade. Only one shade. And a lot of people request for this to be aesthetic, but then you will have to remove the calcium. Yeah. The reason why it's opaque is because it contains calcium. So this for PFM is perfect, for zirconia is perfect, for lithium disilicate, if it's a crown, okay, but if it's in the posterior region, and posterior mean molars, but when you start talking about your first bicusp and then the anterior region, this is a little bit more of a concern. If you are relying on your cement for your aesthetic outcome, if you're not, and then you're good. Okay, what about the veneers? Which cement I, do you recommend? I will, it depends. I have a question. That, yes. That does tie into what you're about to say. Yeah. And the question was, what is your take on light cure only cements when placing veneers? Yes. So, so <clears throat> like as I was talking to um, uh, with Luke before, dual cure cements can shape shift over time. Okay, mm -hmm. and light cure cements came out specifically for veneers in order to avoid that shape shifting. The other thing is that when you use a dual cure cement, you have a limited working time. Okay, you might have three to four minutes. When you use a light cure cement, if your light is, you know, if you turn off your, the light of your dental chair, you, you deliver the veneer into the prep, and you can work with it. You know, you can work with it without a uh, working time being a hassle. The other thing is that you have trying pastes. Trying pastes are not designed for dual cure cement. They're designed 
for light care cements. So if the doctor is doing veneers, he should have a light cure cement that is specifically designed for this with the matching trying paste. I'm not saying they should have a full kit, but if they have two or three syringes, they should have two or, two or three trying paste. So then they could try in with the trying yes. paste. Is it the same color? It's similar. After bonded? It, it's similar. similar. It's similar enough to give the doctor a, a, an idea of what kind of effect that cement is going to cause on the outcome of the restorations once it's bonded. Uh -huh. It's not 100% accurate because the trying paste is made from a hydrosoluble um, material that you can rinse it away. A veneer cement is made out of resin. You can't wash it away. So you need to take that into consideration, but it will give you an idea. So uh, like your cement, what kind of color you have? I believe we have um, something you called... You believe? <laughs> I don't know all of these things from the heart, but we have milky bright. Milky bright, that's kind of it. Yeah. From light to dark. Yes. Translucency and opaque. Yes, milky bright. We have um, translucent. We also have a vast array of Vita shade guys like B1, A1, A2. But in my years of experience, um, most of my patients wanted really white teeth. Okay, every time they got veneers, they say, I want toilet bowl white. white. Yeah. Even if you try to move them away from that, that's what they wanted. Yeah. So I would use Milky Bright most of the time to get that, you know, that maximum opacity. Yeah, that, that, that wow, wow effect, you know, high value kind of thing. So, and, 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 and then, of course, in combination with a very white ingot of lithium lysolithium. Okay. Um, explain to me one more time about the procedure about the how to bond the this leakage. Easy, easy. You etch with hydrofluoric acid. Twenty seconds. Twenty seconds. You can you, yeah. You can use nine. What about thirty seconds? I don't think that will be a problem. No problem. I don't think that will be a problem. I recommend twenty seconds because Ivo Clark, who is the maker of lithium disilicate recommends 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I follow their instructions. Okay. okay. Now, I have done bonding at 20, 30, and 40 seconds, uh -huh. and the bonding still remains the same. I don't know if etching for 40 seconds will cause any sort of disruption in the, in the surface. Okay. So I stick to 20 seconds. Okay. okay. Uh, etch, rinse it away, and then... Dry? Yes. Okay. We're dry. Check the, surface. Check the surface. If it's not over etched. Over etched. And over etched will look very chalky. Chalky. Yeah. White. Right. White. Okay. Usually on lithium disilicate, it's not going to look like that. Okay? And then you apply your silane. Whether you use a single bottle or a two bottle silane, it's up to you. What is different single bottles A and B? Silane. Single bottle, you know, okay. So if the, if an office is doing a lot of lithium disilicate, single bottle is fine because they're going to go through it fairly quick. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're doing every now and then, having a two-bottle system is better because every time you mix, you have fresh silo. Yes. So you guarantee that you have a fresh product. Okay. You know, but if you have, if you're doing this, like let's say this is your week's work, mm -hmm. you know, seven, eight, nine crowns, a single bottle will work because you're going to run out of it in, you know, a few months. So that's okay. Apply your silane, air dry it, leave it on the counter. Okay. Now you go to do the bonding on the tooth. Little, okay. How long? Well, one minute. Three minutes. Three minutes. Some people like to use warm air. Why? Because it will it, it, it will act as a catalyst. It will make the reaction go faster. How can you make the warm air? A uh, hair dryer. Oh, hair dryer. See, That's Shin and I do not yeah, have a hair dryer. <laughs> <laughs> you don't yeah, get there. Well, you, I'm uh, getting there. Welcome to the club. <laughs> but. You know, some people like to use that, but I think that it's unnecessary. We publish an article at dwell time in order to achieve the proper bonding of lithium disilicate, and what we saw was that after three minutes, the bond strength reached its highest point and it maintained. So by the time you leave the restoration silenized on the counter or wherever, and then you go to the patient, prepare and do the bonding, you're gonna spend more than three minutes. So you're good to go. You're good to go. Okay. But if you do the bonding first and then you go to the restoration, and then having a, a, an air dryer is going to make the, the, the reaction faster. Gotcha. 
Now, if you're doing a crown on the tooth, you have to bond. If you're doing a veneer on the tooth, you have to bond. Okay, you should not use self-adhesive cements. I will not recommend that. I would prefer to do the bonding on the tooth using whatever technique, whether it's total edge, self-edge, selective edge, it's up to the doctor, okay? And then applying your adhesive and then using your cement. If it's a crown, do no, a question, quick question. Mm -hmm. when, when can I use Zircli? Zircli, well, case, after try in. After try in. After try in. And okay. this is before you start the etching process. Okay. Now, if you send. Why do I have to use it to clean? To because clean it. To clean it. Clean it. Clean it. On lithium disilicate, it's just to, to. It's a detergent. Okay. Okay. On zirconia, it's a must. Mm. Because the zirconia surface. No, no, back to lithium. Lithium disilicate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, this is for cleaning for this limb silicate. Yeah, just to clean it. And they just clean, rinse it, and then follow the whole color of the yes. procedure. Yes, yes. Now back to zirconia. Okay? Yes. Okay, zirconia, can you explain to me when can I use this? You're going to use it after you try it. After you try it. And you clean. have to use it. They Why? All, okay. The re, Why what, for zirconia? For okay, you? because like I said before, the, the saliva has phosphate lipids okay. that will react with the zirconia surface chemically. Okay. Now, zirconia has something called bonding sites. These bonding sites are like peaks on the zirconia surface that will bond to your, your primer, your Z prime, or your cement that contains Z prime, or the GC product, or the product from Ivoclar, I believe it's called Monoban Plus, that has MVP. But the saliva will deplete these bonding sites. You have no bonding sites now. Contaminated surface, you cannot bond to it. Okay, even if you rinse it, you will have that reacted surface. So you can remove that surface by two means. One, mechanically, sandblast it again, or sandblast. Or you use something like Zerclean or Ivoclean, which because of the pH will remove that surface, okay, and you rinse it, and now you do your bonding. So that means we don't have to sandblast it if I use that one. Well, you need to sandblast it to generate the mechanical okay. retention. Okay. So if you send me the crown already sandblasted, mm -hmm. I'm not concerned about sandblast. Okay. I'm concerned about contamination. Okay. That's my biggest concern because regardless of your sandblast, I'm not going to be able to bond chemicals. So zirconia is not much contamination problem. Do you? What, what do you mean? Whenever they cement or bond the zirconia restorations, I hardly see they have a um, debonding? No, they don't have any debonding problem. They don't, they don't have any discoloration problem. Well, this car, ooh, the light it's is, a, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Um, I will tell you this, it, we're, it, in, our, um, in our office that we get calls from dentists all the time, that's the biggest issue we find. For discoloration? No, zirconia debonding. Debonding. Because debonding. they did not, probably, they did not do sandblast, they did not do the pride. But, but here's the thing, okay. you have access to your customers uh -huh. that they're doing this procedure. Okay. Okay? Yes. When people call us, we don't have access to the clinical procedure. We have access to the protocol. And we ask them, did you follow the protocol? Now, there are things like if you have a short prep, and you don't do no retention. No retention. You have to bond to the tooth structure. Right. Yeah. But if you have a good enough prep, retentive prep, and then you can get away by you know using something like Therasem, which it will have bond strength to the tooth, but not as high as if you use a dental adhesive. Mm -hmm. So when bonding is a must, you have to go through the full bonding protocol to both surfaces. When bonding is not a must and then you can use something like this. And then that way you can achieve a good restoration. But this is something that every dentist that is doing zirconia must have, whether it's Ivoclean or whether it's Zerclean. That's why your recommendation. Uh, yes. And there will be other uh, products soon. So better bonding and better cement. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So my question is then, you know, like uh, from the laboratory side, when I was usually uh, doing uh, felspatic veneers, uh, I didn't, I, did the uh, etching on the laboratory side, but I never silonate my uh, veneers. Mm -hmm. Like in here right now, uh, I'm doing like uh, etching and I'm putting like silonate mm -hmm. and send it to the doctors. But if we're going to use the Zirclean, Zirclean to clean up the inside the surface after trying, do we still need to? 
is it more better to etch it in the laboratory and send it to a doctor or well, we could just here's the deal uh -huh. if the doctor is see I don't have any data uh -huh. to show what kind of effect a product like Zerclean or Ivoclean will have on a silenated surface. Okay. And thank you for bringing that up because I'm going to take that to the lab oh, okay. and see what okay. happens. Yeah. My recommendation will always be if you don't want to deal with uh, the phosphor and the hydrofluoric acid, yeah. have the lab etch it for you and you try it in. On the lithium disilicate, Zerclean or Ivoclean should not will not have a chemical effect. So you don't need to use it. You try it in, you rinse it with water. Some people use alcohol, acetone, and then they silane. Yeah. I think the application of silane should be done at the moment of bonding. Yes. At the moment of bonding. After trying. So you recommend the dentist have to do it? I feel trying is a totally different procedure. Okay. They should not be mixed. Once you start mixing things, like I started my bonding in the lab, now I have to try it, now what do I do? Oh, will this affect my silane? See, these are questions. So what is the best way not to have those questions? Have your lab, either sandblast or hydrofluoric acid at your restoration. That's mechanical retention, that's physical, but anything chemical should be done by the dentist, making sure he follows sure. protocol. Okay. All right? Okay. So any more questions then? How many people connected? See. Four. That's oh, awesome oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh. We got four 50, people. 50, 60. Are four people. Um, <laughs> that's that's amazing. No, no, I mean that's we're we're going, going, we, I we are going viral here. here. I would think about 50, 60 because uh, they're just they're just scrolling up. So. Uh, all right. Okay. So what I'm what I'm talking about the uh, um, today is we had a concern from the laboratory side mm -hmm. and uh, from the I'm trying to help the, our client. Uh, from another good manufacturer company, mm. and uh, we're trying to provide the best product for them. Anyway, worry free. So, um, I hope they can get an information from us. So, regarding about the uh, Lissy press uh, bonding procedure, um, and before that, they have to using the gel clean or ivory clean. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're talking about the other product, which is zirconia, which is popular. And that was for debunding. Yes. Okay. Here's my last question for you. Why is uh, uh, Lissy or Emacs a debunding problem from the dentist side? Well, the first thing I ask a doctor when he tells me, my, my restoration debunded. Okay, where is the cement? Is it on the surface of the restoration or is it on the tooth? Mm -hmm. If it's on the surface of the restoration, there is a bonding issue to the tooth structure. Okay. So my bonding to the tooth was compromised, either by contamination, incompatibility between the adhesive and the cement, and so on and so forth. If the cement is on the tooth, and then my surface was compromised, my restorative surface. So if, to answer your question, my lithium disilicate restoration falls off and the cement is on the tooth, I have problems with silane. Silane was a problem. So, Why? Silane too much? Oh, no. Well, you see, people are used to applying adhesives, and adhesives usually, instructions tell you to add a few layers. With silane, you don't need to, you don't need to do that. Just one application is enough. And if you look at it, if you look at the surface that has been etched, when you place that silane, it spreads out because the surface is very hydrophilic. So let's say I have a micro brush, and then I dip it into the silane. Like this. Yeah. Not perfect. this. Huh? Now, well, let, well, you can use either, but I like to use micro brushes. This is bigger. Yeah, okay. I like to use this micro brushes. Yeah. So I if I dip my micro brush on my mixing well, right? If I dip my micro brush on my mixing well, yep. and then I take my silane and do this. Show them here. Oh okay, God. I take my silane and do this. That will be almost enough. Almost this enough. Silent, right? Yes, sir. Let's try that. One. Okay, let's try that. So we're going, <laughs> we're going full blown yeah, hands yeah, on. Yeah. Right. So you take, you take your, and, yes, and then you just do that. Cover the surface and look at it. It's going to look shiny. If there are areas that are not shiny, you can dip again and finish, and that's it. That's it. You should not go over and over again because too much depth. 
then you're going to have unreacted silent. Your silane has to be in contact with the surface in order to react. And then I just leave it there. Another thing is that sometimes silane has expired. Ah, one year? It depends, you know, but for example. We have to put the refrigerator this. What's the room temperature? Room temperature will be yeah, fine. fine. You know, something that is not, you know, uh -huh. being exposed to the to the to the sun or whatnot. But this one over here, this one expires in June of 2020. Okay. So it's got a two-year shelf life. Okay. You know, that's that's pretty solid. But sometimes, you know, you have a doctor that will do a restoration every now and then or a few restorations every now and then, and all of a sudden he goes, Oh, I got the silane. Well, it's almost, uh, I think, you know, after, Inspire. yeah, but I think I can use it, you know, because they know better, right? They know more than the manufacturer that slaps a, an expiration date there. If the material is expired, they should not use it. And that's one of the things we also learned, that they um, do not use a product that has not, that, that is, you know, still within the expiration um, bracket. Another reason for failure could be that the restoration was not properly etched. So even though you have chemical interaction, you won't have that mechanical retention. Mm -hmm. So that can also lead to debonding. And the other one is definitely something that it, 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 it just bothers me. Sometimes the surface gets contaminated. Mm. And you have blood or saliva in the middle of it. After you do the bonding, and then you're like, ah, screw it. And then you cement it, and then that saliva can definitely interact and not allow, not allow for proper chemical uh, interaction between the cement and the lithium disilicate and the tooth. Mm -hmm. Because you need that, you know, that chain mm -hmm. of bonding in order for the restoration to be successful. Yeah. So sure. you brought up about the brought up about the etching and you know, like over etching, you know, basically the surface will be more whiter. Yes. And if the lab doesn't remove that white surface yes. good enough, that's going to cause the debonding too. It can, it, it can hinder good bonding. So a way, what you have there is hexafluorosilicate, which is a salt, salt yes. but it's not hydrosoluble. You cannot rinse that away. Yeah. You need to use phosphoric acid. Okay. Phosphoric acid, you apply it, just scrub it in for 20 to 30 seconds. Yes. It will react with that chalky surface yes. and make it hydrosoluble. Now you can rinse it away. Yes. Another way of removing this salt crystals is by putting it in the ultrasonic. And ultrasonicated, those are the two ways of doing it, chemically and mechanically. Um, I usually tell doctors that after, if they're doing their own etching, etch it and then just apply phosphoric acid after you etch it with hydrofluoric. Apply phosphoric acid. Well, I don't see anything that is over -edged. Just apply it. Yeah. Uh, phosphoric acid is very inexpensive. Yeah. It's not like you're, you know, breaking the back by applying a little bit of that. It's just another 20 seconds of the procedure. Yeah. So you do that, clean it, rinse it, and then you're good to go. Yeah. I had a question once that they asked me if Zerclean or Ivoclean will remove the over-etched um, salt. It will not. It will not because it will not react with the, with the salt. You need to use phosphoric acid. So this is not good enough for that. Yeah, so I think that's a good information because uh, a lot of laboratories don't do it that way. They just uh, mostly uh, steam it mm -hmm. and they just put like a uh, saline on the surface. So basically it's not removed. It's not removed yeah. and it, it, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to debond, Bond. but it will hinder. Yeah. So you want to have the most pristine, clean surface. Mm -hmm. Come on, if you're doing a veneer and you're relying on bonding and you're charging the patient you know, a decent amount of money for the veneer. Yeah. Take the time, do it properly, don't rush it. Yeah. Convenience is not a fact, it should not be a factor here because you need to be thorough for veneer placement. So what kinds of veneer cementation do you recommend? Choice? As a product? Mm -hmm. um, any, okay, we have a system called Choice 2. It has all the components. For veneers. For veneers. Bonding. Bonding. Mm -hmm. The whole shebang, the, everything. Hydrofluoric acid, phosphoric acid, the adhesive, the silane, and I believe it comes with uh, four shades. Mm -hmm. um, try and paste? Try, no. Try and paste are usually on the side. You need to buy them separately. Okay. But you can use any light like cure cement. Any, any light like cure, like cure cement. Any like your cement that is designed for veneers. And I believe every major company has a kit. Yeah. Every sure. major company. Because they understand that sure. it, it, it is required for a specific product 
for a very specific procedure. Great. Any other, any other question? Any other questions? Nothing over here. No. Okay. So, going? Um, so like you said, what is this? You're going to promote something? If I oh, yeah. Something? Well, you know, uh, sure. Let's do the promotion. <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy? Okay. Let me do the promotion the right way. Like, oh, of course. I brought my prop right here. It is called the Dynamic Duo. Dynamic Duo. You get Zirklin and Teresa. So let me do this right. Let me do this right. Like this was a TV ad. Hello there. Are you having problems with your body into zirconia? Are your zirconia crowns or restorations uh, falling off? No need to worry. Visco has come up with a product called Zirclean. Zirclean should be used after trying in order to remove the contaminated surface um, that has reacted on the zirconia. You apply it for, I believe, some, uh, it is uh, 20 seconds, rinse it away, and you're good to go to achieve great bonding. Now, we have a promotion going on at Bisco. If you purchase a syringe of the ultra duper super Theracem cement, self-adhesive cement, calcium releasing, easy to clean, alkaline pH, and which has incorporated the MDP monomer in the system, so you don't need to use a primer, we will send you a free Zirclean syringe for you to try. You can contact us at bisco.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram, Bisco Dental. Thank you very much, guys. Awesome. Thank All you right. very much. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much.